after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the toxins of animal origin, general introduction of certain animal toxins and forensic significance of animal poisoning. Largely, it talks about the poisons originated from living organisms which are obviously animals. While there is so much diversity in the animal kingdom, the methods of predation and self-protection varies from species to species. Similarly, some animals use poisons as a weapon of predation or self-defense or both. Snakes are the most popular among these type creatures besides other known venomous organisms like fishes, insects, etc. In India, death as a result of a snake bite are mainly accidental in nature. Venoms used in an offensive posture are generally associated with the oral pole as in the snakes and spiders while those used in a defensive function are usually associated with the aboral pole or with spines as in the stingrays and scorpion fishes. In the snake, the venom provides a food getting mechanism. Its secondary function is its defensive status. In contrast, in venomous spiders, toxin is used to paralyze the prey before the extraction of hemolymph and body fluids. The venom is not primarily designed to kill the prey, but it is only to immobilize the organism for feeding. The same can be said for scorpions, although they do use their venom in defense. In fishes such as the scorpion fishes and stone fishes and in clasmo branches such as stingray, the venom apparatus is generally used in animals defense. Poisonous animals on the other hand usually derive their toxins through the food chain. As such, poison is often a metabolite produced by the microorganisms, plants or animals. Next, we will study about the forensic issues. Practically almost all cases of animal bites reported from around the world are accidental in nature and the vast majority are due to unintentional or deliberate provocation of the animal by human itself. Likewise, snakes rarely if ever attack human beings on their own. A number of occupations are associated with increased risk of snake bites like grass cutting, working in rubber, coconut, areca nut and tea and coffee plantations. Perhaps the only recorded case of suicide accomplished with the help of venomous snake is that of Queen Cleopatra of Egypt from 69 to 30 BC, who is said to have deliberately prompted a snake, an adder, to bite her. While homicides can be accomplished by using a venomous snake as an instrument, but actual instances of murder committed by such an usual method are rare. Death due to snake bites are regarded as medical legal in nature and a forensic autopsy is mandatory. Unfortunately, precise characters of envenomation may be lacking in such cases and even fang marks may not always be visible. Today, Immunodiagnosis with the help of ELISA makes it possible to conclusively diagnose death due to snake bite by analyzing tissues around the bite site or the blister fluid or even body fluids such as blood and urine for venom antigens. Now starting with the categorization of venomous animals. 
Several species of animals with or without backbones produce venoms or contain certain toxins that may be dangerous to humans either externally by stinging, biting or by ingestion. Both the categories I will discuss here. First, starting with the vertebrates. In it, we have reptiles and under reptiles, we will study about snakes. Snakes belong to the class Reptilia, order Squamata and suborder Serpentis. Snakes are found all over the world except in New Zealand, Ireland and in Arctic lands. Of the 2500 to 3000 species of snakes distributed worldwide, about 500 are poisonous to humans. The three main families of poisonous snakes exist are the elapid or the cobras, the vipridae or the vipers and the crotalidae or the pit vipers. The elapids cover around half the world's species of venomous snakes and contain the cobras and the mambas. Genera of the elapid family are found in Asia, the Pacific, the Americas and Africa. The existent vipers or vipridae of which the common viper is the best known inhabit Europe, Asia and Africa. The pit vipers, crotalidae, are largely found in North, Central and South America and include the rattlesnake genera that is Crotalis and Cistritus. There are 238 species of snakes in India out of which only 52 are poisonous. Of these 52 poisonous species, majority of bites and Consequential mortality is attributed to five species, which are Ophiophagus hana, that is king cobra, Naja Naja or common cobra, Deboy Rissili or the Russell's viper, Bengaris cerealis, that is crate, and Echis carinite or the saw scaled viper. Next, we will study about the venom of snakes. The snake Venom is the secretion of the racemose salivary glands that is a modification of the parotid salivary gland of other vertebrates and is usually situated on each side of the head below and behind the eye, invested in a muscular sheath. It is provided with large alveoli in which the venom is stored before being conveyed by a duct to the base of the channeled or tubular fang through which it is ejected. Poison is a clear limpid fluid of pale straw or amber color, more rarely greenish and sometimes with a certain amount of suspended matter, is exhausted after several bites and the glands have to recuperate. The venom retains its poisonous properties for several years in dried state. The cobra venom is slightly viscous and when exposed to sun, it becomes a little turbid. The venom of Russell's viper is usually white or yellow. Venoms of different species of poisonous snakes vary in the toxicity composition and the antigenic structure. It is basically a mixture of one or more of the toxic substances or the toxalbumins and the enzymes in varying proportions. Starting here with the first is the proteolysins. It causes liberation of histamine from the damaged muscular endothelium leading to dissolution of walls of blood vessels with extravasation of blood in the tissue space and also causes digestion of tissue proteins and peptides and produces marked tissue destruction. 
next is fibrinolysin it enhances the coagulation process third are the neurotoxins it is mainly found in elapid venom producing curare like effect causing paralysis especially of the respiratory center next is cholinesterase it is also found in elapid venom causing hydrolysis of acetylcholine to choline and acetic acid thus causes the impairment of neuromuscular transmission fifth we will study about the hemolysin it is found chiefly in viper venom causing widespread hemolysis in presence of lecithinase next is cytolysin it is mainly found in viprin venom and causes lysis of cell structures of blood and tissues agglutinins it causes agglutination of the rbcs or the red blood corpuscles next is phosphatidase it produces hemolysis and the toxic effects on heart and circulation with hemorrhage from lungs proteinase it has a trypsin like action causing tissue damage it produces anticoagulant effect from destruction of the fibrinogen it also catalyzes the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin thus producing the coagulant effect next is phospholipase it acts as a catalyst in hydrolysis of lipids by destroying the phospholipids in nervous tissues it alters neuromuscular conduction it also helps in penetration of the neurotoxin into the nervous tissue next is hyaluronidase it helps in rapid spreading of the venom from the local side of bite and thereby quick absorption it is present in all of the snake venoms next is the ribonuclease and deoxyribonuclease it helps in rapid spreading of the venom from the local site of bite and thereby quick absorption it is present in all venoms next are the protease it causes dissolution of vascular wall and helps in spreading of the red blood cells or the rbcs and serum in the tissues next is lecithinase it acts on the lipid layer of the cells causing increasing fragility and permeability leading to cell destruction the cobra venom is neurotoxic and produces muscular paralysis involving firstly the muscles of mouth throat and lastly the muscles of respiration seeks the action of venom being upon the motor nerve cells the action resembling curare it consists of neurotoxin cholinesterase proteases phosphatidase hyaluronidase ribonuclease thromboplastin fibrinolysin proteolysin cardiotoxin phospholipase a a cobra venom produces convulsions and paralysis while a crate venom produces only muscular paralysis the viprin venom is predominantly hemolytic and hemotoxic it causes lysis of red cells and other tissue cells and coagulation disorders bringing about coagulation of the blood and clotting of the pulmonary arteries there will be hemorrhage from the site of bite associated with necrosis of the renal tubules convulsions from intracerebral hemorrhage it consists of proteases hyaluronidase hemolysin leucolysin lecithinase cytolysin thromboplastin phospholipase a and proteinase next are the fatal doses of various bites starting with the dried cobra venom it is 12 to 15 mg dried viper venom it is 15 to 20 mg dried crate venom it is 5 to 6 mg 
and for dried saw scaled viper venom it is 8 mg next is the fatal period the death may occur instantaneously from neurogenic shock resulting from fright otherwise the fatal period is in case of colubrin bite it is half to 24 hours and in viprin bite it is 2 to 4 days next we will study about the antivenoms Antivenoms are prepared by immunizing horses with venom from poisonous snakes and extracting the serum and purifying it. Antivenoms or antivenins may be species specific that is monovalent or effective against several species that is polyvalent. Monovalent antivenom is ideal but the cost and non-availability besides the difficulty of accurately identifying the offending species makes its use less common. Next are the Gila monsters. These poisonous lizards belong to the genus Hello Dermatidae and are indigenous to the southwestern USA and Mexico. They have poison glands on the mandible and deliver the venom along corrugated teeth into a bite. The venom contains hyaluronidase and proteases in addition to gilatoxin. The bite can lead to anaphylactoid syndrome. Next, we will study about the fishes. The sea is a host to a wide variety of venomous creatures with stings or bites and is a special threat to swimmers and divers. Marine envenomations have risen sharply in incidence over the last few decades owing to an increase in popularity of recreational diving and other water related sports. Approximately 225 species of marine fish are known to be venomous. These include the stingray, scorpion fish, lion or zebra fish, stonefish, weaver fish, toad fish, stargazer and certain catfish, ratfish and surgeon fish. Next about the venom, poisoning by the consumption of fish meat that is itchy through sarcotoxism usually occurs in warm climates but is also observed in moderate climate zones when hygiene measures are ignored. Tetrotoxic and ciguatoxic fish poisoning are caused by ingestion of fish that accumulate toxin producing organisms such as bacteria or protozoa without being affecting themselves. Scombroid poisoning is an example of a toxin produced by the improper storage after death and other fish produce poisonous stings. Next we will study about the amphibians. Of the amphibians, the toads are of foremost interest to the toxicologist because of a number of species produce noxious substances in their dermal glands. These compounds include amines, peptides, proteins, steroids and both water soluble and lipid soluble alkaloids. With the exception of the last, these substances are produced by the toad itself rather than bioaccumulated. The genus Bufo emanates the alkaloid bufotinin that is NN dimethyl 5 hydroxy tryptamine next we will study about birds certain birds possess poisons although they cannot produce it some pitohui birds skin and feathers contain powerful neurotoxin alkaloids of the batrachotoxin group these are supposed to aid the birds as a chemical defense either against the ectoparasites or against the predators such as snakes, raptors or humans. The birds perhaps do not produce batrachotoxin themselves. The toxins are most likely 
they will come under the beetle genus Coracin, which is a part of the bird's diets. Next are the invertebrates. Under invertebrates, we will study about arthropods and starting with the first, we have cantharides or the Spanish fly. The dried beetle Cantharis vesicatoria, known as a Spanish fly, contains a vesicant cantharidin. Contact of either with the live or the dried beetle with the skin results in immediate burning with vesication. Besides this, other beetles causing similar representations include Epiquatua cinerea, that is blister beetle, and members of genus Pedrus. Next are the venom. Cantharidin is a powerful vesicant and may be administered in the form of powdered beetles or the tincture or active principle. It is also used as an aphrodisiac or an abortificent or a counter irritant to the skin in the blistering plaster or a promoter in the growth of air. Cantridin is a nephrotoxic or the kidney poison and is readily absorbed from all surfaces including the skin. 10 milligrams of cantharidin or 1.5 grams of powder cantharides is found to be a fatal dose. Next are the insects including bees, wasps and ants. While snake bites are more common in tropical countries such as India, anaphylactic reaction to hemenoptera stings are much more common in temperate countries. This is despite the gross underreporting of such stings. Hymenoptera stings are unwaringly caused by honeybee, that is, Epis mellifera, paper wasp, also known as Polistus annularis, and Rupalidia gregaria, European wasp, Vespilia germanica, hornets, Vespa, and Dalkilophila vespula and yellow jackets that is Vespula penny salvanica. A few incidents result from stings of fire ants that is Selenopsis invicta and rarely jumper ants that is Myrsmesia pilosula. They produce a painful local reaction which recedes with time. An allergic phenomena produced by them may kill the patient because of prior sensitization. The number of stings may be so great that the patient uh, is so young so as to kill with primary toxicity. Next is the insect venom. Hymenoptera venom is a mixture of biogenic amines that is histamine, 5 hydroxytryptamine and acetylcholine. Enzymes including the phospholipase A and hyaluronidase and the toxic peptides that is kinins and wasps, epimin, melitin and mast cell degranulating peptides in bees. Next we will start with the arachnids or the scorpions. The scorpions are Poisonous arthropods that have a fleshy segmented body with four pair of legs, a pair of claws and a tail. The posterior segment is long and bulbous and contains the venom gland and a hollow sting at the end of the tail in its last joint. The sting communicates with the venom gland by means of a duct. The sting injects venom in the injury produced by it. The adult scorpion are 2 to 20 centimeters long and big, black colored and are more dangerous than the small brown ones. The scorpion bites are always accidental as they live in cracks and holes in houses. Next we will study about the venom of arachnids. The main toxins include phospholipase, acetylcholinesterase, hyaluronidase, serotonin and neurotoxins. The venom of Buthus species of India 
contains phospholipase A which causes gastrointestinal and pulmonary hemorrhages and disseminated intravascular coagulation. Scorpion venom is clear and colorless toxalbumin that is more toxic than the snake venom. Next we will study about the spiders. All spiders with the exception of two small groups are venomous. There are over 1 lakh species of spiders. However, only about 20 species cause serious envenomment in humans, while about 150 to 180 can cause significant toxicity. The common Indian species that cause serious envenomation include the brown recluse, black widow, wolf spider and tarantula. Other spiders such as orb weaver, running spider, hackle band spider, giant crab spider, lynx spider, jumping spider and the tangleweb weaver which are also encountered in India do not cause significant envenomation. Funnel web spider which can cause significant envenomation is found only in the Australian continent. Next the venom. The venom of brown recluse is cytotoxic and consists of several toxic components including hyaluronidase, ribonuclease, deoxyribonuclease, alkaline phosphatase, lipase and spinogomyelinase D. The last mentioned is the main constituent which is responsible for tissue destruction. The venom of Black widow is neurotoxic and contains six active components of molecular weight ranging from 5000 to 1,30,000 D. The main component is alpha iatrotoxin which binds avidly to a specific presynaptic receptor. Next we will study about mites and ticks. Gastrointestinal illness has been reported in children who handled the mite that is holothyrus coccinella and then placed their fingers in their mouth. Skin reactions and irritation in human is seen from a number of different mites including Germanis gallinae that is the chicken mite. Next is Ornithonysis silverium or the northern fowl mite. Ornithonysis Bacoti, that is tropical rat mite and Allodermonesis sanguinesis rodent mite and Rickettsia acari. Respiratory allergies due to the house dust mites are fairly common. Rhinitis and extrinsic asthma are caused by house dust mites that is Dermatophagoids species. The scabies mites is antigenic and stimulates autoantibodies leading to a pembiogoid like reaction. Scabies may also mimic other skin disorders like contact dermatitis, scab dermatitis and generalized urticaria. Next we will study about centipedes. Centipedes can inflict painful bites characterized by immediate local burning pain erythema, swelling, inflammation, superficial necrosis, lymphadenopathy, and lymphangitis. The edema may last for several hours. Local pain may be excruciating and the wound may bleed profusely. The commonest genus encountered in India is Scolopendra. Occasionally systemic features are seen that is anxiety, dizziness, vomiting, headache, convulsions, irregular pulse and cardiac arrhythmus. Rhabdomyolysis and renal failure have been reported with the giant desert centipede or the Scolopendra sp. Next we will study about millipedes. Millipedes do not bite and are not venomous but have a granular system that produces a foul smelling disagreeable fluid containing phenols and hydrocyanic acid or the HCN. Some millipedes secrete or squirt these 
irritable liquids for defensive purposes which can cause brown or purple skin lesions that blister after a few days and then peel off. Sometimes these lesions take a long time to heal. Contact with the eye can result in severe conjunctivitis, corneal ulceration and even blindness. Next are the nidarians. Starting with the nidarians, first is box jellyfish. The box jellyfish, fire medusa or sea wasp or better known as Chironex fleckeri is the most venomous of all stinging marine creatures. Box jellyfish has a transparent box-like bell with four pedalia that is feet. Each pedalia may have up to 15 tentacles attached. Because of its transparency, the box jellyfish is virtually invisible under the natural conditions including clear, bright seawater. Next with the venom, the venom is a complex mixture of serotonin, histamine, bradykinin, hemolysin, prostaglandins, hyaluronidase, phosphodiesterases, fibrinolysin, RNAs, DNAs, adenosine, triphosphatase, alkaline and acid proteases as well as the alkaline and acid phosphatases. Each box jellyfish carries enough venom to kill several adults. Features include profound muscle spasm, hypertension, acute respiratory distress, respiratory paralysis, sinusis, hemolysis, arrhythmias, and the cardiac arrest. Severe parasymptomatic dysfunction including abdominal distension, urinary retention, and dry eyes is common. Death can occur in less than a minute. Next, starting with the mollusks. Mollusk poisoning or shellfish poisoning is caused by the consumption of bivalve mollusks that accumulate toxins of protozoal or algal origin. Toxins from the algal sources are also referred to as phycotoxins analogous to the mycotoxins from the fungal sources. Mollusk poisoning caused by the algal toxin is usually classified according to the symptoms that they cause in human. Then we have paralytic shellfish poisoning or the saxitoxins. Next is the diarrheotic shellfish poisoning or ocadaic acid. Next is neurotoxic shellfish poisoning or brevetoxin. Amnestic shellfish poisoning or domoic acid. And lastly, the intoxication with venoms, that is the conotoxins from snails belonging to the genus Conus in another form of mollusk poisoning. Paralytic shellfish poisoning or PSP is caused by saxitoxins or the STX produced by marine red tide dinoflagellates and freshwater blue-green algae such as Alexandrium, Gamnogenium catenuta and pyrogenium bahamins. The STX are potent agents that can block the sodium channels in nerves and muscles at the extracellular side of the channel, which leads to conductivity disturbances and paralysis. In severe cases, the neurological symptoms spread to the extremities and respiratory muscles and without the ventilatory support, patients may die between 2 and 12 hours after the ingestion. The major causative agent of diarrheatic shell poisoning or the DSP is ocadaic acid which is produced primarily by red tide. Dinoflagellates belonging to the generous dinophysis and prorocentrum. The DSP toxins are lipophilic and accumulate in the digestive glands of missiles. Ocadaic acid is a potent inhibitor of protein phosphatases 1 and 2A. In humans, the consumption of contaminated mollusk leads almost excessively to uh, gastrointestinal symptoms that is diarrhea, 
nausea, vomiting and abdominal pain which appear between 30 minutes and a few hours after the meal and can be caused by as little as 40 micrograms of the toxin. Neurotoxic shellfish poisoning or the NSP is caused by a toxin produced by another red tide dinoflagellate that is gymnodenium brevi. The active principle is the lipid soluble polyether brevitoxin, one of the most potent neurotoxins known. In humans, ingestion of the brevitoxin contaminated shellfish can result in gastroenteritis with neurological symptoms. Within three hours, nausea and vomiting, paresthesias, reversal of hot or cold sensation, throat tightness and ataxia may occur. There is no paralysis. There is complete recovery from these symptoms within two days without the specific treatment. No human deaths have been reported with brevitoxin poisoning. The domoic acid is a neurotoxic agent. Acute symptoms include vomiting, diarrhea and in some cases are followed by confusion, memory loss, disorientation, coma or death. Now I will summarize all that we have studied in this module. The animal kingdom comprises of more than 1 lakh species spread through major phyla including the arthropods, mollusks, caudates etc. Venomous animals are proficient of producing a poison in a highly developed exocrine gland or the group of cells. Venomous or poisonous animals and insects are capable to deliver the toxins during biting or stinging. They produce the toxins in highly developed secretory glands or group of cells or the byproduct of metabolism. Every animal toxin varies considerably to each other in their chemistry and toxicology. Venoms, for instance, may be composed of proteins of both large and smaller molecular weight including the polypeptides and enzymes. They may be amines, lipids, steroids, amino polysaccharides, quinones, 5-HT glycosides or the other substances. Venoms are very complex containing polypeptides, high and low molecular weight proteins, amines, lipids, steroids, amino polysaccharides, quinones, glucosides and the free amino acids as well as serotonin, histamine and other substances. Some venoms are known to consist of more than 100 proteins. The bioavailability of venom is determined by its composition, molecular size, amount or concentration gradient, solubility, degree of ionization and the rate of blood flow into that tissue as well as the properties of the engulfing surface itself. Among all of the poisonous insect and animals, the cantharides, snakes and scorpions are of medical legal importance. Poisoning resulting from fish and other marine creatures is referred to as ischithiasm, which may result either from envenomation by stinging or biting or from ingestion of toxic or decomposing fish.